Hello everyone and welcome to a bit more of a formal video than my usual content takes. Um, as you were probably aware, I have finally released my first official game. Obviously CAD went up um, a few Halloweens ago, it's like a little test project, see what I could do in two weeks. A Minimum Wage is the first official game that I have put some serious effort in and to celebrate that being available officially on itch.io now link in the description go buy it again. i um thought i'd show off my very very first game so does anyone remember fps creator it's the, the title of the video does anyone remember it? does anyone ever use it there's a little piece of software created by the game creators in i'll say 2004 2005 at least that's when i got into it i've moved house twice since then this is how long ago it was um, I even back in the day, uh, I loved it so much. It was it was like a, a, a very visual, easy to use drag and drop interface. It, all the content came from model packs. It came supplied with a bunch of content, and people would use it to make pretty generic looking games. Although it wasn't that powerful, it was you paint on your floors, you'd paint on your walls, you'd drag and drop items into it. It's very user friendly experience, though, for its lack of power. And a lot of uh, people really, the community really rallied around it. Um, oh, I got involved in the forums a lot and helped sort out some coding issues with some of the scripting languages that people thought, can we do this? And yeah, it turns out you're good. And um, I also uh, used it quite heavily back in the day to, it's what got me into game development. I mean, hell, I made my first gaming PC I built specifically to use FPS Creator X10 so I could get that sweet floor and physics and ragdoll effect. But in the end, I went back to the original FPS Creator supported by the Black Ice mod and the community. Um, back in 2013 or so, um, I was working on this game. So, yeah, with that said, look at that Eula. Oh, you could tell I really took some pride in this. Look at that. Okay. So, let's just jump straight into it and show you what I was working on back in 2015, five years ago. This game never got published. I, I moved on to Unreal Engine and I was going to recreate it, but look at that. Look at that epic intro and um, splash screen. Look at it go. There we go. Presents. Oh man, I made this so slow. <laughs> oh, powered by FPS Creator. There we go. And Black Eyes mod. I thought, oh man, back in the day, I thought this was the most professional thing in the world. It looks so amateurish now. But yeah, look at that title. Oh, and the slow zoom. Excellent. And there we go, there's all the licensing stuff. So yeah, I did take this kind of seriously. This was going to be released. I might actually put this up for sale on itch.io for like something stupid, like $2. Just so people can support the um, support the, the project that I'm actually working on. Support minimum wage, support the upcoming unnamed project. Which is more like a first person point and click adventure puzzle game. So yeah, if you want to get your hands on this and have a play, I will I will do that. So yeah. Check this out, this old menu, old ass menu. Press enter to begin. There we go. Oh man, look how out of out of focus those toaster tips are. I think all the, the our assets were set in 720, uh, or possibly even lower. So here we go. Um, we're gonna, this is my idea of a 3D main menu, so I'm clicking between the two things. It actually looks, it, it's held up pretty well, I won't lie. So let's hit new game. And that should, there we go. And we're gonna have to have a little chat with the toaster, but yeah, look at look at these cracks and that artwork. I mean, the chains are a bit ropey. That black should be transparency, but I don't know. I think you can tell how my art style has evolved over time. But it was always essentially centered around this kind of cartoony look. Look at that pointer. Oh my god, I thought this was the best thing ever back in the day. There's no, there's a little bit of drop shadowing on it, but it's on the wrong side. <laughs> Okay, we're out. Uh, I'll go. We gotta talk to the toaster. He's gonna he's gonna jump around for a minute because I for some reason I thought it was funny, but yeah, let's have a look at all. Oh, that knife and that spoon. The cheese is a bit blocky, and there yeah, you can see we're, we're my my habit of living in the title menu, wanting to be a title menu, a three D title menu, has existed for quite some time. Look, as you can see, it was um. It was originally a concept I had for this game because the idea of this game was the internet, you know, all the games on the internet because everything's digital now, they're all seeping into each other. So you as a human have to kind of travel a la Tron into the internet worlds of all these different games and uh, unite them all again. Okay, so now he's going to sit on this bench for a bit and then we can left click through it. Oh, he's talking about Red Dwarf now because obviously he's the toaster from Red Dwarf. That's unashamed. Now we've got to find a way off the main menu, which I thought was a pretty ingenious uh, little puzzle. So I think it's 
the little X button here. No? There we go. Click the little X in the corner. That's thinking outside the box. Oh my god, look at that horrid, that horrid JPEG there. There's a little cutscene. So, so badly rendered. I think it's because it's being stretched so big on, on this 1080p. The Calypso Residence. A little Simon the Sorcerer reference there. T minus 21 days to T day. I don't know what T day was. I can't remember what T day was. A college dropout returns home. So yeah, you've uh, dropped out from school, disappointed your parents, but now, ha ha ha, you're gonna be the savior of humanity. His parents must be so proud. <laughs> this is so slow. <laughs> Why did I make this so slow? There we go, we're loading the uh, genuine 1980s era college dropouts bedroom. And that, oh, that title fade out's pretty <laughs> slick though, come on. So there we go, now that cursor changes, see? Can we, aliens one, two, and three. Oh, look at the, oh, wow. I was really proud, I was really proud of these. Look, Moneyopoly, <laughs> ladders and snakes, somewhat hungry hippos. <laughs> oh, ple pleasure suit Gary, <laughs> instead of leisure suit Larry. Oh, look, there's the, uh, the ICBM, the building battle. <laughs> Oh wow, I forgot how cool this looked. Oh, if I remember correctly, you can put the tapes inside the VCR and that'll actually play a film. I thought the kind of art style with the thick black lines was pretty cool. So let's, uh, let's read the box. Yeah, let's pick it up. Oh, look at, look at that. Just, can, th can we throw them around? Yep, yeah, left click to throw. There we go. All right, you sit right there. Um, what else do we need? We need to make sure we don't lose any of these bits because I'm pretty sure the physics is a bit janky. There we go. I'm going to put a keyboard without a compute, computer without a keyboard. And let's drop that genuine 1980s era monitor right on there. Now time to play some Ultimate 3. I actually, I got the, I, I got a, I tweeted Richard Garrier and he actually tweeted me back. So I got the sign off to use, um, some sweet Ultimate artwork ripoff. So let's see if we can, there it is, Ultimate 3. See, there we go, look. I actually tweeted him the, the picture of this artwork of Ultimate 3, and I was like, yo, dude, can I can I use this? And he was like, yeah, go for it. We'll pop Aliens 1, 2, and 3 in the VCR. You can just sit here and just go through all his tapes if you like. What's on this one? Harry Potter. So yeah, little video there, the Harry Potter. Booty Babes Volume 12, okay. Let's watch some Booty Babes. Oh, shake it, baby. Ooh, 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 ooh. All right, let's pop that over there. And what's this last one? Oh, God, no, that's the box. Ouch! Uh, 57 Shades of Beans. <laughs> Obviously, Mike, in front of the Heinz. What is this? Is this a cartoon? I'm sure one of them was a cartoon. All right, then. I think that is all of the videos. So let's get Ultimate installed. Let's turn this sucker on. What's missing? Oh, a chair. Okay. Guess that box of records will do. There we go. Let's grab the records. In fact, yeah. We've all been here. We've all been here. All right, um, enter the boot commands. Look at that DOS prompt. I mean, it's a bit, a bit pixelated, but load Ultimate 3. Oh, this is so nostalgic. <laughs> it's not a perfect recreation of the DOS command, obviously, but you get the idea. Look, look, though. Look, look. My little, my little Ultimate 3 um, animation thing is ah, it's so good! <laughs> so yeah, we've, uh, we've, we've gone with, to a game within a game. So let's do a new game. Initializing character create. Oh, I forgot! So yeah, this is my idea. This is my um, funny, funny mocking of um, character archetypes and stuff. So you can be male or female. So we're going to be... I think female is more entertaining when you, when you see, there we go. Right, what race are we gonna be? Are we gonna be a microwave? Are we gonna be a blender? Or are we gonna be a toaster? Microwave, blender, or toaster. These are gonna be like the classes. So I think we'll be a blender. And do you wanna be a blender accountant? A blended organ donor? Or a blender pizza delivery driver? Um, we'll be a blender accountant. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's start the game with our blender accountant. Another little title screen fades out, and we got to add to the toaster. So we're at landed in an RPG this time. Okay. So here we got loads of interactable stuff. So you can interact with all of this. So we can read the book. 
The Adventures of K Kangorg the Barbarian. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. Don't forget that insane toaster to shut up. <laughs> right, so let's eat some bread. There we go. So you can interact with stuff. You can drink the wine. But watch out, because if you drink too much, you will get drunk. And pick the lock. Yeah, boy. Now look at those. Look at those textures, that lighting. This is the Black Ice mod at work here. This isn't basic SPSC. But you could make really quite good looking games. I mean, the doors... The doors weren't finished. <laughs> like They're very out of place compared to everything else. Oh, God, Toast, will you smeg off? Let's drink a whole bottle of wine. Let's drink another cup. Drink another cup. And you can see how we've gone a bit wibbly now. Because we're drunk as fook. Uh-oh, where did the key go? Did I pick the key up? Oh, I did. I picked up the key. Okay, good. Uh, you can eat the cheese, too. So, eat the cheese. Eat the bread. Hopefully that's going to sober me up a little bit. I think it's working. It doesn't look too bad, really, does it? Like the flames on the flame on that torch is a little iffy, but I don't know, I think the torch itself is pretty cool for its low, its blocky, low poly nature. Like this is like the the basic tutorial section. So I guess it, like if I remember correctly, we got to get all these boxes out of the way. There we go. We can just give them a punt. That's it. Come on, Grognak. You can do it. Kangorg, whatever your name is. Originally was a turn-based combat system and in here would be your first introduction to that That's why there's things like the health potions lying around Oh, we got the dungeon cell key nice. Let's eat some more bread Cheese whatever. So now we got that key. We can go and escape There's another look so teaching you the jump mechanics there Just attain your destiny. Okay, so how does one attain one's destiny? Oh, this looks pretty destinal. The Spoon of Destiny. Okay. Let's open this. Ooh, this looks pretty. The holder of the Sacred Spoon of Destiny entrance shall be granted. So let's place the Spoon of Destiny. Whoa. What's going on? So yeah, that is the first bit of... Um, super awesome dungeon crawler it does go on for a few more levels after that um but like i said if you want to if you want to grab it you know it's, it's, it's not it's not finished by any means it's really janky but i think it's got a certain charm to it it's got a few levels it'll keep you entertained for about an hour i'd imagine maybe if you depends on how, how well you are at figuring out the puzzles really so this is old mac he was going to be voiced by a, an american friend of mine he's um, a macintosh he doesn't like it when you get close to him so the spoon gods have chosen. Entropy is law after all. Oh, okay. whoa, Mac. Mac, is that it? Mac, wait. Okay. Remember which terminal? Ah, it's this one. And that's it. That is the end of that little section. Um, yeah, it's a bit ropey, but I like to think this has got some charm to it. You know, and anyone who's... Uh, suffered through long enough into this video you probably would enjoy playing it if you think you like what you see and you'd enjoy playing a game like this then you probably would so ah oh, so we've gotten lost so got a key there I mean I'm pretty sure yup grab that through through there and then we can open the old chesticles grab that key there's a lot of cool stuff like the little minecraft -er esque cactuses I like those chairs too. I think they look pretty cool. And the stockades. I, mean, I might have gone a bit overboard with the, the screws and metal plates. But, you know. Explosive storage. Excuse me? Let's go and... Uh, let's go and follow... Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. This, uh, we'll, we'll do that puzzle. We'll do that puzzle. We go through here. Oh, God. Go through here. Oh, uh, there we go. Yep. So, that's where you need to, you need to blow up. What's in here? A knife. There we go. Okay, so we got a knife. Oh, look at those fishes, though. I mean, how cool is that? How cute does that look? I mean, come on, be honest. I miss this art style. I really do. And we've got, yep, follow the signs for the explosive storage. And there we so, yeah, here's my little crates of TNT. It's <laughs> fucking adorable. That was a little bit of a tour around the Super Awesome Dungeon Crawler. A little bit of a look ground through one of the first games I created in one of the most 
underpowered engines. But I mean, look at that wood. Those textures I made back in the day were sleek. So crisp. Beautiful. I'm pretty sure they're like... They're, they're like... Um, uh, what's it called? 1098? Like 1028? 1024 by 1024? They're, they're, they're like pretty, pretty big textures. And I think the whole game as a whole just looks really pretty. The models, the layout. I mean, we, we've um, working on being able to do 90 degree angles and these bars and things like this. Like turning walls into this was incredibly difficult with the way FPS Creator uses its, um, its engine. Like you have to develop wall meshes and then it will spline them together and you assign a texture and it's, oh, getting that model to, to accept one with gaps in like this and still have the cutouts for the doors and stuff because it, it has to do that automatically like so that's one of the reasons why the doors are a bit rope but i think that one looks pretty cool nice that was what that's what the these doors should look like but I didn't finish it. But as I say, if you want to grab grab a copy of this and help support uh, both the channel and my future projects, the link will be in the description down below. Just go on it, uh, two dollars, and yeah, have have some fun. Just remember, it's a very janky game in an engine that I abandoned a long time ago, and there's no guarantee it'll run on your system. It's running fine on mine, um, and I've tested it on my laptop too. So. Yeah, if you want to have a play, go for it. And uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, go buy Minimum Wage, also available on itch.io, link in the description, and I'll see you next time. Uh, goodbye now.